how do we show that aging can be targeted? Well, we chose metformin because metformin is a, a drug that has existed for over 70 years and uh, is attenuating those hallmarks of aging that I showed you before. In fact, metformin in the 1950s was used to prevent flu and malaria. It's only during that time that people noticed that people with diabetes had lower glucose when they took metformin and then it became an anti-diabetic drug, but it's much more than an anti-diabetic drug. It's now generic and cheap. It's one of the cheapest medication in the United States. And we're designing this study, TAME, targeting aging with metformin to show that it does, to prove the concept that it does target aging. You see here metformin in the middle and all the uh, hallmarks of aging are targeted. And this is from a kind of a recent paper. And let me dive a little bit more into it and explain what's going on. So from a biological perspective, metformin goes into the cell through a special transporter and it binds into complex one of the mitochondria. And after it does that, there are two major things that happen. On one, on one hand, and on the left side of, of the slide, there is a, a change, um, the, the, the cell is sensing this change of mitochondrial activity and increases AMP kinase. And AMP kinase has its own actions on mTOR and some of those other regulators and improve also insulin and IGF action and changes the whole sensitivity to insulin. And studies have shown that it affects specifically one, two, three, four, five hallmarks of aging. Okay, this is only from the left part of this slope. Now on the right side, once complex one has less activity, then the production of oxidative uh, damage and DNA damage is decreased. Um, and metformin has also effects that might not related to actually binding to, to the mitochondria that also affects damage. And, F and affects two other parts of uh, uh, aging and an inflammatory pathway. So at the end, it affects all the biological hallmarks of aging. Now, I'm looking at that and I'm saying, really? Someone wants to believe that there is a drug that was just by nature, it's a French lilac just by nature affects everything that we know about aging? Well, this is the thing that you have to understand. If we have a drug that truly affects aging, so what happens? You take a, an old cell and make it in younger, or a young, a, an old organ and making it a younger organ, or a body, makes the body younger. So what happens? A lot, a lot is improving. So when we start to fight about the exact mechanism of aging of all those drugs, it's confusing because we find that a lot of things have happened and it's hard to say which is the primary one and which is the secondary one, but it's common in drugs like rapamycin or sirtuins to see that you affect lots of things and not only one. And that's why really you understand that targeting the hallmark of aging is a network and you improve others by, by targeting one. We did a small clinical uh, trial that's called MILES. Amea Kolkarni was a student on this. And what we've done basically is we took elderly uh, people and gave them basically either placebo or metformin for six weeks took biopsies of their muscle and adipose tissue after that, had a two weeks wash up period. And then for six weeks, we switch. Those that were on metformin are in placebo. Those who are on placebo are now on metformin and we repeated the biopsies. And, and what we found on one hand, there was an improvement, a, a physiological improvement 
in things related to the metabolism, their glucose and their insulin and their insulin secretion. But we really wanted to see the biology. And the interesting in the thing in the biology, there are really two, two interesting things. We have muscle and adipose tissue. It's not the same transcripts, okay? The muscles are muscle specific and the adipose are adipose specific. In other words, it's not that metformin does one thing in all the tissues. It changes within tissues, different compartments. So for example, in muscle, pyruvate metabolism is a major pathway. But the second point is that it also wasn't only about metabolism. It was also on other things with aging, such as DNA repair, um, NAD biosynthesis that affects really both, BRCA mediated the DNA damage. And in adipose tissue, it was a lot about biosynthesis of fat, but also about collagen remodeling and other things that are affecting metabolism and aging or both of them together. Okay, so really the point here, it's a little bit different transcripts, but they affect the aging as a whole and not only the metabolism. Uh, those are some of the pathways. And when you look at the pathways, the metabolic pathway mainly, they're affected uh, to the same directions with in muscle and in fat, not to the same extent, but to the same direction. But more important is to look at the upstream regulators of those pathways. And the upstream regulators include, for example, mTOR, which is the target of rapamycin, include TNF, TGF-beta, MIC, other things that are very much in the middle of aging. So we actually have a confirm that metformin is changing transcript from old to young in the things that are relevant to aging. Now, from a clinical perspective, uh, metformin has substantial effect on health span and lifespan. So for example, if you take normal people and give them metformin, they develop less diabetes. If you take people with diabetes and give them either metformin or other anti-diabetic drugs, it delays cardiovascular disease. If you look at cancers, almost all kinds of cancers are 30% less in people who are on metformin. There's also support that metformin delays cognitive decline in clinical studies and less in uh, Alzheimer in diabetes and not diabetes. And the coolest study, I'll show you a graph, but it's about lower mortality by a metformin. And really, you see that the metformin, from what we know about the biology and what we know about the clinical, is a perfect tool to target aging. So let me show you this thing that is worth more than all the words I said before. This is a study that was going in the UK to pharmacies and identifying almost 200,000 people at the same age, the same pharmacies, the same doctors that either have diabetes treated by sulfonylurea in blue and an equal amount of people that don't have diabetes and are not treated with sulfonylurea, but they're matching. Those groups are matching. And you're looking at their mortality in five years. It's not a prospective, it's a retrospective study, but you look at their mortality for five years and you basically see that everybody, uh, you know, the 10% are dying in those five years, um, but it's more like 25% in the people who have diabetes. We knew that diabetes is a major uh, risk for death. But then they had 78,000 people who were assigned metformin. And their control group in black is again, people without diabetes. So the people with metformin have diabetes, they are more obese, they have other diseases, but what is fascinating, their mortality is decreased by 17%. Okay, they die less. With diabetes, with obesity, with anything, they die less than people who don't have those things. That's how strong 
metformin in targeting aging. So the study is de designed for a proof of concept to show that a composite of age-related disease can be prevented by metformin, can be delayed, can be moved in time. But more important, we're working with the FDA to obtain this new indication of preventing uh, comorbidities of, uh, of aging. Now, I want to show something and then say it in simple word, but I'll show you something here. Since, it, since in the study we have outcomes of cognition, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and death, the question is, if somebody between age 70 and 79 has a major cognitive deficit, what's his chances over the next years to have one of the other comorbidities, cardiovascular disease, cancer, or death? Well, it's like 10% in men and 6% in women. Okay, let's change it around. What happened to somebody who had cancer? What's his chances of getting any one of those diseases? And it's the same, 10 and 6. And what actually, if he had cardiovascular disease, what's his chances of getting the others? It's the same. It's about 10 and now 8. So the point I'm making here, we are agnostic to the diseases. You can come with whatever disease you had, and you are going to get whatever next disease you'll have. For us, the diseases is just counting aging. It doesn't matter to us what disease you're going to get next. We're just going to put it years later. 